Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So I'm pretty excited because this Sunday we're going to have an amazing guest in the program, Kevin Kenny. Kevin Kenny is a farmer from Nebraska that I have been in touch with over the past six years. He has advocated for right to repair in his state more than anybody that I know, and he has raised a fuss when, in my opinion, a fuss needs to be raised. If you're familiar with any of the videos that I've done on the topic with Right to Repair in Nebraska, then you're probably aware of the fact that there is some screwery going on in that state. And having people like him, boots in the ground, that are really involved with it, that actually are farmers, is really, really useful when it comes to giving people information on what it is that's going on. Before we do an in-depth interview with him, where we go over a lot of comments I've been getting from dealers, I'd like to just give you one preview. So one of the people involved in this, the Far West Equipment Dealers Association left a comment on one of my YouTube videos. And I thought it would be worthwhile to go through this comment before I have my interview with Mr. Kenny on Sunday. It says over here, at least Mr. Rossman admits he lacks the authority to speak on the subject matter. For the record, John Deere does not control Far West Equipment Dealers Association, which is a not-for-profit trade association that advocates for equipment dealers of all colors, sometimes in conflict with their OEM relationships. Mr. Wilson is also incorrect that the provisions of the 2018 Memorandum of Understanding between FWEDA and the California Farm Bureau Federation has not been met. The MLU provides to the extent not already available, the maintenance diagnostic and repair information will be made available to end users through authorized agricultural dealers at fair and reasonable terms, beginning with tractors and combines put into service on or after January 1, 2021. End users will also be able to purchase or lease diagnostic tools through authorized agricultural dealers. Certain information and tools may be available earlier. Manufacturers and dealers meet this commitment, with the most recent MOU between the American Farm Bureau Federation and John Deere making these tools and diagnostics directly available to end users in independent repair shops, in some cases at no cost. Right to repair proponents knowingly mislead the public that farmers cannot repair their equipment. They want access to control horsepower and emissions, which the federal government regulates to comply with safety and air quality. We suggest you do your research and learn more about the fines imposed by the EPA for chipping, tuning, and modifying equipment in violation of the Clean Air Act. Now, one of the things that you'll hear very often is they will say that because of the EPA's regulations and because of John Deere needs to comply with this, that they cannot allow farmers access to what it is they need to be able to repair their tractors when they fail. And he is 100% correct. As I said in my video, I lack the authority to speak on this subject matter. But honestly, that's not really an excuse anymore. We have access to the internet. Everybody has in their hands or in their pocket a tool that they can use to access the entirety of human information available over the course of our existence. So there really is no excuse for me to be this ignorant. So I thought I would dig into it a little bit and check out a little bit of the Clean Air Act. And I figured that a great place to start on the Clean Air Act might be over here, 42 U.S. Code 7521, Emission Standards for New Motor Vehicles or New Motor Vehicle Engines. So let's kind of dig into this a little bit. I'm particularly interested in Section 5 over here, and I'd like to read it to you, and then I will select and highlight a portion, and you tell me what you think of it. It says information availability. The administrator, by regulation, shall require, subject to provisions of Section 7542C of this title, regarding the protection of methods or processes, entitled to protection as trade secrets, manufacturers to provide promptly to any person engaged in the repairing or servicing of motor vehicle or motor vehicle engines, and the administrator for use by any such persons with any and all information needed to make use of emissions control diagnostic systems prescribed under this subsection, and such other information, including instructions for making emission-related diagnosis and repairs. Now here is the what Willie Cade would call the mic drop moment. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? No such information may be withheld under Section 7542 of this title if that information is provided directly or indirectly by the manufacturer to franchise dealers or other persons engaged in repair, diagnosing, or servicing of motor vehicles or motor vehicle engines. Such information shall also be available to the administrator subject to Section 7542 of this title and carrying out the administrator's responsibilities under this section. Let me repeat. No such information may be withheld under Section 7542 of this title if that information is provided directly or indirectly by the manufacturer to franchise dealers or other persons engaged in the repair, diagnosing, or servicing of motor vehicles or motor vehicle engines. Now, John Deere is correct when they say that there are penalties for trying to bypass emission systems to put out stuff that is non-compliant, and that has gone over over here in 40... 
CFR 1068.101, and it does look like there is a civil penalty of up to $44,539 for each engine or piece of equipment in violation. However, nowhere in this section does it say that John Deere is the policeman. That's the EPA's job. That's not John Deere's job. And according to this regulation, if they are providing this information and these diagnostics to their authorized or franchise dealers, they got to provide it to the farmer's technician of choice as well. That's written right there in the law. So what John Deere is doing is they're taking this regulation and they are mixing this regulation into this regulation, but they're ignoring the part that they don't like, which is the part that says that by law they have to provide this to you. They are hiding behind the emissions regulations and they're ignoring the regulations that would actually allow the farmers the ability to fix their own shit. Now, if we go back to the rest of what he had said over here, I'd like to read you something from Jared Wilson, which is a follow-up. John Deere dealerships provide more funding to the FWEDA than any other manufacturer. That's the person who left that YouTube comment. Thus, they have more clout and voting power than the others. John Deere dealers have incredibly draconian agreements with Deere that prevent them from advocating against John Deere's interests. So while the FWEDA may very well have advocated against the interests of other manufacturers at some point, I would be very curious to see a case where the FWEDA advocated for anything that doesn't align with John Deere's priorities. Can you name one? Um, let's see if he comes back with a comment. They didn't meet the terms of the 2018 agreement because there is still a ridiculous amount of diagnostic information in the Dealer Technical Assistance Center, DTAC, database that isn't currently available to anyone except dealer technicians. That includes important information on product improvement program, PIP, announcements on parts that frequently fail and are replaced by John Deere, sometimes for free, with no compensation for the downtime experience for their known defective part, until a certain hour or years of operation threshold is met, in which case the the operator pays all costs out of pocket with no way of knowing what could go wrong because the information is in public. That doesn't exactly sound like they are uh, abiding by the terms of that MOU. And if they didn't abide by the terms of an MOU back in 2018, then why would I believe that they are going to abide by one now? But at the end of the day, this is very, very simple for me. Even if I didn't take the 20 seconds to look up these regulations to figure out that what I was being told was complete and utter bullshit, what this really comes down to is whether or not the farmers are happy. I'm a simple man. When the farmers are happy, I will be happy. If the farmers are unhappy, but the Equipment Dealers Association people that get their money from John Deere are happy, then I'm not happy. Now, if both of you are happy, that's great. But I'm trying to help the farmers. I don't care about the Equipment Dealers Association. And I honestly, that call me crazy. I just don't care that much about John Deere. If the farmer that paid for their equipment is happy, then I'll be happy. Until they're happy, I probably won't be happy, and I will continue to push for legislation in these states. Now, part of this memorandum of understanding and part of what we're going to be going over here on Sunday is that in return for this memorandum of understanding, there is this understanding that they are no longer going to be pushing for right to repair bills in all these different states but that doesn't mean I'm not going to because I collected almost a million dollars earlier this year and that was to be used for political lobbying to try to push right to repair forward. And I'm not one of those selfish pricks that only cares about himself. Even if the bill makes no mention of consumer electronics right to repair, I am going to use some of that money to help the farmers as I have been over the past several years because a win for them is a win for us all. So I don't care if the Farm Bureau decides to fuck over all the farmers. Maybe I'll pick up where they left off and maybe we'll do a better job. We got a bill passed for in Colorado for wheelchairs. We got a bill passed in New York State before the New York State government did what New York State government does best and destroyed it. And we're going to push forward to try to get a right to repair bill passed for farmers, even if the Farm Bureau decides that, that they're going to slow walk it. Because let's face it, if there's anything Kevin Kenny's going to be able to tell you on Sunday, there's a lot of screwery going on when it comes to the Farm Bureau and supporting right to repair. Frankly, in my opinion, they haven't been pushing the ball forward much anyway. Let's see if we could pick up where they left off. We uh, tried for it in Maryland. Made a push in Georgia. We have a full-time lobbyist working in Missouri, and we have the great people of Fredrickson and Byron working in Minnesota. I mean, we're going to get some work done one way or another. If the Farm Bureau wants to help, great. If they don't want to help, then screw them. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.